To program a minute or six pager, the first thing you're going to need to do is place the pager into the programming cradle, then attach the cradle to the computer with the USB cable. Once you attach the cable to your computer, your computer should recognize the cable has been attached and will search for drivers to drive the programming interface. Once the drivers have been installed, you may see something like this on your computer. It just is telling you that the drivers have been installed successfully. This only happens one time when you first plug it in. If you plug it in after the first time, you won't see this message again. This message is just to let you know that it was successfully done and now you can program and read your Minute or Six pager. Keep in mind the programmer interface is not the same as the charger interface. Even though they look the same, they will not interchange with each other. So you're going to need to have the programming interface if you want to program your Minute or Six. So you can go ahead and click on close if this screen has been popped up for you. And then we'll go ahead and look at the programming itself. Once the drivers have been installed on your computer, you can click on the operation read code plug. Selective call frequency one vibrate. Once the pager is done reading, you'll get this screen here. The first screen you're not going to be able to do anything on. So we can click on the second tab at the top where it says model options. Here are some options that you're going to want to look into changing. For this video, I'm going to explain how to do this very briefly. I'm going to tell you what to put into these options. We do have another video which is more in depth and you can view that video if you want to know what all these settings do. But for this video I'm going to keep it short and go over these settings very quickly and just tell you what to put in the settings. The first option here is the stored voice duration. We're going to set that for 60 seconds. The announcements can be either male or female. It's your choice. The function switch, switch announcements, we're going to have those sent, set to on. Battery level announcement, we're going to set that to off. Fixed volume, we're going to have that set to off. Priority scan time, we're going to have that set to 0.512 seconds. Pager alert duration is going to be standard. Unread message reminder is going to be off. Priority tone alert is going to be off. Privacy is going to be off. Always on is going to be off. Once you have set these settings up, you can click on the function switches. The function switch refers to the knob on the top of the pager that's labeled A through H. Each box represents one knob. So for example, this knob position A is set to selective call. The alert type is what type of alert it's going to have once you get a page. The announcement we're going to leave that to standard. This first position is set for push to listen and that keeps the pager quiet until you get paged and then you have to push the button to listen. The choices here are up to you what you want to put into the pager but you can use this screen as an example of what you might want to put in the pager and you could pause the video here for example and enter all these settings into your computer. Try the pager out this way. If you don't like it, you could change it. This first switch position A is set up to selective call. Selective call means it's going to be quiet until you get paged. You could have chosen monitor. The monitor will monitor all the traffic and also will alert you if you get paged. In this example, we have it set up for selective call, vibrate alert, and 
the announcement is set to standard. Switch position B, we have selective call. This could be changed to monitor or one of the scans. It's up to you. The alert type is set to tone and vibrate. It can be tone, vibrate, or tone and vibrate. Tone is the beeping sound. Vibrate, it just vibrates. And tone and vibrate, it beeps and then vibrates at the same time. These are all selectable by the uh, programmer, and you can set these to however you wish. This is how we would suggest you might set it up for a default. Um, you can copy these settings down and use them if you wish, or you can use your own and experiment and see what you like best. We're going to go ahead and click on channel 1. On channel 1 is where you would enter your frequency here. So in this case it's 450.0125. If you're a VHF, of course this will be 154 point something. The channel bandwidth is over here. You want to choose 12 and a half, not 25. 25 is wideband. Everyone should be on narrowband, so just choose 12 and a half. Revert in. This is a little bit complicated to explain. I'm not going to go over that here, but it is in our other video. And this video, we're just going to leave it at 7.5 revert in. You should do that for all of your pagers. Tone system, you want to leave at user. Even though you may have a tone system that you know, go ahead and leave that at user. Coding options, leave this at none. Here's where you would enter your tones. You would enter your tone 1, tone 2, tone 1, tone 2. And each of these are an alert. So you would get a call 1, which would be, in this example, 288.4 and 800.0. So if these two tones are set, 1 and then 2, the pager will alert. The alert here tells the pager how to alert, or, or in other words, what sound to make when it gets alerted. Standard alert is just your standard beeping, and then there's music channels down here. These aren't really uh, musical, they're just different ways of beeping. And each of these alerts, say channel or call 2, which is 600.9 and 669.0, will alert and it will sound like music 1. So let's just play these down real quick so you can see what they sound like. Uh, if you were to get alerted, for example, on 288 and 800, this is what it would sound like. If you were to get alerted on 600.9 and 669.0, it would sound like this. And so I'm going to go ahead and play the rest of these music uh, sounds so you can hear them. This last one is called a custom alert. I don't have anything programmed for this custom alert, but this is where you could customize the alert it makes, and you could enter your own wave files here and make it sound like anything you wanted to. The custom audio section is located at the bottom of the screen. You could click on the custom audio section. You'll get this little message, message that comes up. It kind of explains how to set up the custom audio. I'm not going to go over that in this video. There are two sections you can enter your custom audio. The top section is the alerts, which I just played for you. The second part is the knob positions. Um, so when you change from A to B or B to C, you can set up the custom alert of how that sounds. I'm not going to um, go over that in this video, but it is here and uh, just be warned that it can be difficult to set up these 
um, audio files, you do have to have them in the correct format and the correct size, otherwise the pager won't accept it. So now that you have all your programming information entered into the software, you can click OK. It'll bring you back to the main screen and then you can write the code plug. When it's writing and done, it'll make a little beep sound and then it'll, call. Frequency one. it'll Vibrate. tell you what um, knob position it's currently on. You could hear from this uh, pager, it's set up to a male voice. What we could do is we can view the user data and we can change the voice from male to female. So you can see how the female voice sounds. Then we can program the code plug. Selective call, frequency one, vibrate. And so that's your female sounding voice. And each time you change the knob position. Selective call, frequency one, tone and vibrate. It would announce Monitor, frequency one tone and vibrate. It would announce what each knob position does.